Okay, today we're going to talk about patterns. I use a lot of patterns in my work. I use them for the flowers, I use them for wings, uh, I use them for all kinds of things. Generally, if I make something uh, that requires sheet steel or whatever, I generally make a pattern out of it. If you look up here, I've got cowbell patterns, goat bell patterns, I've got shovel patterns, I've got patterns for butterfly wings, I've got patterns for grape leaves, I've got, I've got, I even got patterns for corn stalks over here. I've got patterns for about a little bit of everything, okay? People have asked me where I get my patterns from. Okay, I'll be honest with you, the goat bell pattern, the cow bell pattern, a friend of mine gave them to me years ago, okay? So friends are giving me patterns, uh, a lot of my patterns, the leaves, uh, from on the video you'll see where I actually picked up leaves out of the, uh, uh, off the ground outside the shop and pressed them in a book and then took them and traced them out and made the patterns for my leaves. So all my leaves patterns, uh, except for the grape leaves, all the other leaves have actually came from the woods around my shop. Now, these pretty little flowers I'm holding, these pretty little flowers, uh, they're just cheap plastic flowers, soap flowers, whatever you want to call them, from the local Five and Dime. I bought them the other day. These two little sprigs were three dollars for the both of them, okay? And I found that these are a real good source for patterns for flowers because you can take these apart and you can fold these out and you can make a pattern out of it that you can make flowers with. So there's one good source. The one over there. <clears throat> one of the best sources that you'll find for patterns and ideas in general are books and publications. The Alabama Forge Council puts out a regular publication called the Bituminous Bits. And then every once in a while they put out what's called the Best of the Bits. I have the whole series to my knowledge. There's eight volumes at this time. And these books are just packed full of all kinds of inf information. Uh, they have flower patterns, leaf patterns, uh, just a, a wealth of information. Money well spent. Um, I have Metzger's pattern book for the Arts and Blacksmith. Uh, I've got the other two Metzger books as well. Um, I have a pretty good sized library. Uh, of books. Um, never pass up a chance to get a good book. Uh, there's also available on the internet, uh, the Ford Artist Blacksmith Association has a uh, real nice uh, how-to section in it with all kinds of articles uh, and you'll find a lot of patterns in there. Um, the uh, Pittsburgh uh, Artist Blacksmith Association, or you know, Pittsburgh Artist Blacksmith Association I believe it is, has a real nice how-to section and there are several other groups uh, on the internet that have some real nice how-to's uh, with patterns and things. Um, you know, <clears throat> check out all these resources. It's, it's just, it, it's a wealth of knowledge that we're, we're, we're lucky to have. Uh, so there's a good source for pattern also. So, once you found the source for your pattern, let's talk about sources a little bit more. Uh, one of my favorite sources for patterns, coloring book pages, right here. Okay, if you do a Google search on, on rabbits, bunnies, butterflies, coloring book pages, you'll get nice one-line drawings, okay, that you can modify and make to suit your purposes. Okay, then all you got to do is print them out, cut around it, and you can make a pattern. It's one of my favorite sources. Now, now that we've discussed where to get your patterns at, or some places to get your patterns or ideas from, let's talk about what we make our patterns out of. Uh, back when I was a kid, my sisters used to sew, and my mom used to buy these pattern things, you know, 
that were real flimsy, but that was great because you put them on cloth and you cut them out. Well, our work is a little more durable, okay? So, I've seen people make patterns out of wood. I've seen people make them out of cardboard. I've seen people make them out of CDs. Now, I've never made one out of CDs, so just out of curiosity, I got an old CD out, and I took a pair of scissors, and sure enough, you can cut a CD. But I'll bet that sucker melts, okay? Which is one reason why I've never used one. Sometimes things get hot in the shop. Don't know if you've noticed that, but they get hot. So anyway, you can make them out of CDs. I'm not going to say you can't. A lot of people do. So there's one source of uh, material. I have an overabundance in my shop of 14 gauge sheet steel. Anytime I find any 14 gauge, I snag onto it. So just about all my patterns are made from 14 gauge sheet steel. Okay? I take my, my piece, my, my printed out piece, I cut it out. I put it on the sheet steel, I trace around it, I cut it out with a plasma cutter. I clean it up real nice, I pay awful lot of attention to it when I clean it up. And then I drill a hole in it and I hang it on the pattern board. Okay, so you can take a forged element like this ball with that taper on it and you can take this pattern here with the butterfly wings and you can turn that into butterfly with a rivet holding it together. Okay. So anytime you're making something, it doesn't take any longer to make two of these than it does one, really, when you get right down to it, because you've got to set all the, you got to draw the pattern, you've got to set everything up, so you, if you make a pattern, you can put it on the wall, and then next time if you need it, you've got it. So I always try to make patterns for things I'm working on. Okay, so next we're going to take, and we're going to show you the steps of how I make a pattern. So I hope you like the video. I hope you enjoy it. If you do, please like it and share it with your friends. I would appreciate it. So thank you. So here we have our coloring book pictures. And we take our scissors and we cut around them as close as we can to get them as nice as we can. Once we have them cut out and we like the way they're cut, then we take them and we lay them on the sheet steel and we trace around them with either a silver pencil or a sharpie. I personally, I like a silver pencil because it leaves a better line for me to follow. Once we have them traced, then we take them and we cut them out. I use a plasma cutter, but you can use an oxyacetylene torch. Some patterns you can cut out with a cutoff wheel. There's more than one way to cut them out. My preferred way and the quickest way is, of course, with a plasma cutter. Now here are some pictures of uh, the leaf patterns that I made probably about 10 years ago. I dried the leaves in a book and then I took them and I laid them on paper and traced them out. Once I traced them out, I copied them, scanned them, and that way I could make two or three different versions sizes of each leaf. And then I cut them out. Once I cut them out, just like we did before, I lay them on the steel and on these I traced them out with a sharpie and then I cut them out. Once we get our patterns made, we drill a hole in them and we hang them on the board. That's the best way I've found to keep track of all my patterns. Now here's my oak leaf patterns. Notice that they curve and they're different sizes. That way you can flip them over back and forth and gives them a little more life. There's some copper oak leaves and then my favorite is an antler shed, forged antler shed laying on a bed of leaves uh, is one of my favorite things to do with, with the leaf patterns. Now here I've got my grapevine, uh, my grape leaf patterns that I use for my grapevines and things like that. Next we have the standard rose pattern. It's available on the internet uh, in a lot of publications. 
a lot of, lot of places you can find a rose pattern, and here's the roses. So that's how I make my patterns. I find patterns extremely useful, like I said. Uh, this is uh, a more complex pattern. I make this walleye with it. It has about five, six pieces, uh, but it makes making the walleye fairly simple. So I hope you've enjoyed this video today. If you have, if you found it useful, uh, I'd appreciate it if you'd like it and share it with your friends. Uh, pass the word on. And uh, I thank you for watching. I truly do. So you stay safe out there. And we'll see you on the next video. Bye.